Wellspring Ministries presents Streams in the Desert, hosted by Pastors George and Sharon Stover. This dynamic Las Vegas couple bring the life-changing Word of God alive through the anointed prophetic ministry. Their teaching causes mountain-moving faith to bring the victory of God's love to bear on the everyday issues of life. Join George and Sharon now as they share with you the secrets and the joys of a fulfilling and abundant Spirit-filled and Spirit-led life. I was praying this morning with uh... Pastor Lou and, and Sister Camille, and I would encourage you. We pray for, it's only a half an hour from 9 to 9.30 on Sunday morning. And uh, I would encourage you, if you want to learn how to pray, if you just want to come and join us in prayer, uh, I'd really encourage you to do that. It wouldn't hurt you to get up earlier and, and come in. And then, of course, Pastor Lou has his class. Pastor Sharon has hers. Uh, we have classes for the young kids. Uh, that begin at 9.30 and go till about 10.30. So th there's a lot available for you if you avail yourself of it. I said if you avail yourself of it. Amen. See? And uh, I don't know why you wouldn't. I pray that you will. I, 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 my, my, my whole Christian experience has been one of I cannot get enough of God, can't get enough of Jesus, cannot be in the house of God enough. I was glad when they said to me, let's go up to the house of the Lord. We'd drag our two kids to church. They didn't want to go. We'd drag them to church, you know, kicking and screaming. Man, I don't know any kid wants to go until they get there. That's right, exactly. And uh, even then. The, well, the thing is, if you, if you don't establish the importance of church, the kids will never understand that it really is important. And uh, I've even watched them that have, They've sat in church their whole lives and then just go off and leave, and then all of a sudden they get smart and they come back because they find that was you. Okay. And yeah, and you know, because you find out that outside of God, outside of Jesus in your heart and life leading you, you're really only working on half your cylinders, if that. And if you've ever had a car that's blown a few cylinders, you know, it, that's not real good. You don't really proceed along real good. But you get Jesus in your heart and life, and he will begin to show you the real capacity you have for greatness. Amen. Amen. I, I, I can't stand being mediocre. I don't want to be mediocre. Even if I am mediocre, I'm not going to settle for it. You understand what I'm saying? We need to keep, we can't, need to keep pressing for excellence, keep pressing for more. And there's so much more in God. I just can't, I, I can't believe uh, how much there is, uh, and, and yet I haven't even touched the surface. And I'm hungry for that. And I, I pray that you will be too, because God has great, he's got great plans for you, great hope for you, great, I mean, your, your divine destiny it would just, I mean, just your mind can't even wrap around it. See, and you limit you. You're the only person that can limit you. Even the devil can't limit you. Because in Christ, you have authority over him. Amen. Satan is fallen. Jesus said, I saw him like lightning. Woo! <laughs> Out he went. Amen. God's in control. It may look like the devil's in control of this world. He's not. God's just watching his watch because he's got a time. See, the devil's time is, is limited, very limited. That's what time is for, to limit his effect on humanity because God really, really loves people. He's big, big on people. That means he's big on you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I, I started uh, talking about discipleship on Wednesday, and as I was seeking the Lord, I just, uh, I really, I need I need to, to talk to you a little bit about it. It may sound dry to you, but it's not. It's actually very, very exciting. And uh, 
I hope I can somehow impart to you some kind of an excitement for the Word of God and for the things of God. Because you have not lived until you get in partnership with Jesus. I said, you have not lived until you get in partnership with Jesus. I mean, whether you're going to play ball, whether you're going to follow some vocation, I don't care what you're going to do. If you're in partnership with Jesus, it is going to be just off the charts. Your life is going to be awesome. That doesn't mean you're not going to have problems. The thing is, though, you have the problem solver as your partner. You have the one who has the answers as your partner. You, you have the one that can fix everything as your partner. Hallelujah. He can even fix a lousy marriage. I mean, he can do anything. <laughs> he really can. Hallelujah. It's a good, he's, he is so good. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. <laughs> yes, he does. Praise the Lord. Sharon and I would be divorced today if it weren't for Jesus. That may be hard to believe, but it's really the truth. And he came and he just fixed everything. Uh, before I start, though, I would, as I was praying this morning, the Lord spoke to me and said, you know, your church has just been bar mitzvahed. I said, what? I don't quite understand that. <laughs> but at 13, the boys bar mitzvah and the girls bat mitzvah, that means they're adult, they're grown up, they've become mature. The Lord said, we've been here 13 years, this location. Stuck in the mud. Not that it hasn't been good. Not that God hasn't moved. Not that we haven't seen a lot of wonderful things. A lot of people have been saved. Praise the Lord. But as far as our, our potential and our growth goes, we just haven't, we, we just stuck, got stuck in the mud. Yeah. And he says, you, you bar, he said, you tell, you tell the people you've been bar mitzvahed. He said, everything, everything that you've been waiting for is going to open up before you very quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and the spirit of Azusa is going to fall on this property the minute you move in to that barn. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And, and the thing that the, the, that the devil has stolen, the canker worm, the palmer worm, the crawling locust, the locust, what they've eaten is all going to be restored. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And, uh, you, you know, it may not, it, it, I have never had a problem meeting in the house. Well, I have some, some challenges. I like to move around a lot, and I don't have a lot of room to move. So I'm going to have room to move, praise the Lord. And, uh, yeah, we're going to, yeah, I'm going to have a door. Uh, I think I really am going to do that. I put a door over here, a door over here, so I can bring my Harley on the platform. I mean, that'd be a good way to start a sermon, wouldn't it? Okay. Well, anyway, I don't know if we'll really get it on, but we'll give it a go. And, and, but the one thing is, we'll have the organ out there. We'll have our drum set out there. We'll have a full platform, the full width of the building, about nine foot wide. And, uh, you know, it'll, it'll feel like the church. We'll get our flags of the nations back out, hang them on the walls and something. And uh, it's just going to be good. Very exciting. Uh, if, you, if you can give to the building fund, do it. And uh, we're not we're not not going to build out there. We just there's there's a strategy of going. We've got to get out there. You know, first of all, you've got to have a mission. We do have a mission, and it's missions, locally and, and to the world, and and to build up the believers. Praise the Lord. But we have a mission, and it's unique to our, this church. Praise God. And. Uh, 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 we, we, we need to take care of ourselves. We have been, that's the growing up process. That's been the time we've been here. We've been through some stuff. We really have. And we've matured in a lot of ways. And I'm sure we have a lot more ways to, to grow. I don't think you quit when you're 13. No. Praise the Lord. Start. Huh? You just start. That's right. But, but at least you can, you can sit. You can sit with the, uh, with, the, with the leaders, the religious leaders of the world and, and talk to them like Jesus did because you're at a place now where you, be, you understand things. See? And then, you need, then we need people. And once, once we have those three things, the money will come. Real easy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Imagine being able to sit all the way back there and you won't have a wall between you and me. Amen. Yeah, but we'll see. We'll see the good 150 and the the way we're going. So, pray for that. I, I thank God for uh, 
Gilber the, both the Gilbertos, the Medinas, have been out working in the hot sun all week, uh, building a temporary. They're, they're taking one of the old trash things out there and, and turning it into a storage shed. And that's the temporary one, the one they're working on now. Then they're going to do the other one uh, if they don't pass out from the sun first, but if they're going to do the other one permanently with a roof on it and shingles, it'll look just like the barn with doors, and that'll be our permanent storage. And uh, uh, we were talking about, you know, building out, Dr. John, and talking about building a storage room in the building, and you said, what do we need a storage room for? And uh, I thought about that, and I think it was right after that it dawned on me we could use those outside things. And we wouldn't need that, and that would kick our seating up. Hallelujah, It'd give us a lot more space and everything. So, and it'd be cheaper, the less walls to build. Yeah, so, you yeah, know, all works out. It's good. And see, it's interesting. If you have suggestions and things, too, do, say them, speak them. You know, I, I listen. I do. I don't always. I don't always do what people tell me to do, but I'm listening for ideas. I know I don't have all the answers. See, it's together we're going to build the church. Together we're going to establish a work for God in this in this area that we're called to. That's going to really shake the shake things up up here. Time frame. I want to move in no later than September first. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm really wanting to push for that. That's why we need help, uh, John and and Daniel and and. Uh, Pastor Lou have been out trucking stuff out. We've got what we've got two bays completely cleared out now, don't we? Just about, yeah. Just about, yeah. And so, and we're going to start packing up. We we had garage sales for a couple of weekends, and we're done with that now. Now we're going to box everything up, put it in the truck. We'll have several trips down to our thrift store. We'll get rid of all that stuff. That'll be gone. And so, any any time, if you can come in during the day, I mean, come, and we'll put you to work boxing stuff up and get ready to move because we're moving see the the we're living in a time when there's going to be a tremendous outpouring of the holy spirit no doubt about it and we can we can either be a part of it or we can miss it and personally i don't want to miss it i want to right so we need we, we need to begin to prepare and that's what we're doing i believe god is is moving everything has a has a time has a purpose I mean, it's amazing. We, we've invested over $900,000 in this property with the, what we've built and everything. This is pretty amazing for a church this size. It's awesome because God has given supernatural uh, help and it, that's come in. If we're faithful, he's faithful. You, you, never, you never look at your own ability. You, you know that God has so much more than what you have. But you do have, we do have to do our part. When we do our part, then God does his. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's really exciting. And I'm looking forward to, to being out there, getting out there, and uh, praise God. And uh, I, uh, cost-wise, all I know is that with, with the money we have, we can pour the slab. We can uh, get some framing and stuff up. We've got, two, uh, we've got, it's plumbed, and we have one restroom that you can, you can't, if you sit down, you can't close the door. Unless you really, you know. So anyway, that's all going to be fixed so that we actually have two operable uh, bathrooms, a men and a woman's out there, and uh, probably a common sink area or whatever, lounge area. But it'll, it'll be nice So, because that's what is the tack room now. And uh, it'll, it'll really, when we get done, it will be nice. Hallelujah. And you'll be proud of it. And uh, we'll have a good time in it because I'll guarantee you, if God brings an Azusa anointing into this place, fire going to fall. <laughs> and stuff going to happen. It'll be good. Uh, we're, we're also talking about taking the temporary basketball nets that we have and mounting them permanently out in the parking lot, too. So it'll always, they'll always be there. Hallelujah. Oh, just one thing. You, you change one thing, everything changes. Everything shifts. Everything begins to change. Everything. It's, it's, good. it's going to be good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What are we going to do with this place? Classrooms. 
Yeah, this is a classroom, that's a classroom, that's a classroom, that's a, you know, it, it'll be good, yeah, whatever. We got plenty of space, believe me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, turn, to, turn with me, if you will, to Mark chapter 4. Father, I thank you for your word. It is living, it is powerful, it's sharper than a two-edged sword. Hallelujah. It will absolutely transform our lives if we will just give it entrance into our hearts, into our minds, into our hearts, Lord. And we're opening up to you. Your word, your word, hallelujah, quickens. It gives life. Your word gives wisdom. Your word is absolutely settled in heaven. It's the truth, absolute and uncorruptible. And Lord, we thank you that as it, as it comes into us, we take on the mind of Christ, our capacity for, for, for just moving as victorious conquerors and overcomers in this life is, is so expanded. And God, we thank you for it. Hallelujah, that you cared so much for us that you gave your only begotten son. Lord Jesus, thank you for all you suffered and all you gave because you loved us. Amen. Amen. Matthew, Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, verse 13. I hope you have a Bible. Hallelujah. This is your Bible. Hallelujah. This is your Bible. I believe what it says. I believe what it says about me. I have everything that it, sa it says I have. Every promise is yes and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Mm. God is good. Discipleship is, is, is kind of, it's a Christianese word. It's something that you don't really hear in the world. You hear things like mentoring, uh, life coaching, all, all kinds of things like that. But it's really what it is, is discipleship. When you take an apprentice, plumber, and the master plumber walks together with someone who is learning how to be a plumber, that apprentice, is, that's really a discipleship situation. Okay? You get a coach, basketball coach, and you're, you're good, but you're not all that good. And the coach can come in, and he can look at you, watch you, begin to work with you, and make you a champion. See, that, that's coaching. That's also, he's the disciple or you are the disciple. And that's what discipleship really is. And what we, what we want to do is provide an environment where we have that. I was, thought it was really interesting. John and, and, and Dr. Lewis A. Grillo, uh, the, the Romanian missionary back there is <laughs> where, I mean, they're out there working, they're all dusty, they're all dirty, and what are they talking about? The things of God. He's asking questions. He's trying to figure out how to answer them. Hallelujah. Serves him right. He did that to me for years. I thank <laughs> God you're the guy I prayed for to get even. Praise the Lord. You know, it's wonderful to have that kind of hunger for the things of God. And so, uh, and that's, so see, that's discipleship. That really is. And, of course, he got him a free lunch, too. So that was pretty good. So praise the Lord. It, we had a good time. And, uh, but it is. It's, it, discipleship is not some mystical, wild, weird kind of a thing that's only Christians. and all. No, 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 no. It's, it's when one person begins to pour their life into somebody else. See, because if, if we can add value to your life, that's what I'm here for. That's what Pastor Sharon and I are here for. That's what your elders are here for. That's what those that have been around here for a while are here for is to impart into you what we know about this marvelous person called Jesus and what we know about the marvelous person of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And what we know about the, our Father God. Uh, one God in three persons, and, and it's just, he's, he's, he's so multifaceted that you, you almost have to you just learn about the Holy Spirit. You're still learning about God. You're learning about the Father. You're learning about God. You're learning about Jesus. You're learning about God. But it's all, there's so much. So much. And, a, and in a whole lifetime, we will never get it all. I mean, we're just not going to get it all. It's too, too big, too vast, too marvelous, too wonderful. Hallelujah. I mean, come on. If I can't even, if I don't even know my wife yet, and I've been married how many years? Woo! Yeah. <laughs> right? Still learning. Still developing a relationship. See? How much more with God? Thank you, Jesus. There's, there's really, in Mark chapter 4, verse 13 through 20, there's, there's 
uh, uh, four different kinds of soils. I want to talk to you about that because the soil is you. The soil is your heart, my heart. That's really it is. The seed is the Word of God. The Word of God is always good, always. You know, God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. That's not just a saying. God is good all the time. And His Word is true all the time. His Word has something very contemporary for us all the time. I don't care what generation that we're in because he established it for eternity. His word will remain. The heaven, the earth, all of it's going to be gone one of these days and he's going to replace it with a new one that's never been touched or tainted by sin. We are not going to destroy the earth by, you know, cows passing gas in Australia or any of the other ridiculous things that the EPA people are coming up with. I mean, I just read a thing, they're going to close down, what, they're going to close all the car washes? I don't want to wash my car. Anybody want to wash my car? I don't want to wash my car. I really don't. I'm used to a car wash. They're going to close them down to protect the environment. Excuse me? Don't ask me. Anyway, but see, none of it, we, we should, yes, be good stewards, but let's not be idiots, you know, and, and get all wrapped up and we're going to destroy the earth. We can't. God established it, and it's going to last until he says, I'm going to wrap it up, and then it's going to go up in a ball of flame. The wonderful thing is, if you know Jesus, if he's your Lord and Savior, you won't be here when it happens. Huh? You'll be with him. And you'll get to see. I don't know if he'll let you take part in creating the new heavens and the new earth, or if he's just going to show you how he did it in the beginning. But there's going to be a whole new heaven, new earth. I mean, woo, glory to God. Oh, that's a fairy tale. No, that is the absolute gospel truth. God who cannot lie said this is the way it's going to be. I, I can hardly wait. Uh, on the one hand, I'm gone. You know, on the other hand, it's expedient for me to stay. So I'm going to stay around a while. Prayerfully, 120 years, I want my full measure. Praise God. All right. So there, you're, the, you're the dirt, baby. Well, really, I mean, God, God, in the beginning, what did he do? When he formed man, he, he formed him out of the dirt of the ground. We're all just dirt bags. Huh? But filled with the life of God, the power of God, and, and created in the image and likeness of God. But he did it out of dirt. <laughs> so we can't, get real, we can't get real uppity, right? I mean, he did a marvelous job. Look at yourself in the mirror like Dr. John says. You'll see God did a marvelous job. He really did. Amen. And, and we're, we're, <laughs> we're propagating that glory. So, and, and only disciple, it's only a disciple. Everybody wants to go to, wants to be called a Christian so that they can have all the benefits that God has promised. And, and there's people running around, they're preaching all this stuff. You live any way you want. You do whatever you want. You don't have to go to church. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. You just this and that. Well, I agree. You don't have to, but you should want to. A Christian should want to be in church. A Christian should want to be reading their Bible. A Christian should want to be gaining more knowledge and, in, and becoming more intimate with God. That's what a Christian should be. If you're not, I'd say you're not saved. You need to get born again, man, because that comes with, that just comes with it. Praise the Lord. And, uh, 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 and, and so we're expecting all this stuff because we're so selfish and we're not willing to give up ourselves even though he gave all of himself. That's what Jesus did, gave all of himself. God gave his best for us. And we're expected to do the same thing, is give all of ourselves back. I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. That's the way it's supposed to work out. And, but, so only disciples reach the 30, 60, and 100-fold increase. We all want to increase. Each of us has a percentage. We want to increase this year. We want to, right? I'm in the increase. I love it. Hallelujah. And, and, but the first soil of the heart, and we're dealing about the heart because it's real, that, that's our inner man, our, the soulish depths of our being. See, our spirit, if we're born again, our spirit is already commingled together with God. We're one with God. Hallelujah. It's a wonderful thing. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. We're a new creation in Christ. The soul, our intellect, and our emotions, 
and our uh, 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 the seed of our will. That's our, our our soul, and the first soil of the heart impacts our soul and its knowledge. Knowledge. The first soil is knowledge. And Jesus said, the sower, God, Jesus, sows the word. The word is living. It, it's not just ink on pages. If you ask the Holy Spirit who wrote this to reveal this to you, it will come alive to you. It will become the most exciting thing you ever read in your life. And I've read some really good books. But boy, the story's in here. Woo! There's, there's something else. Because it, it's true. It's history. Actually, it's his story and the, and the story of his people. But Jesus said, the sower sows the world. And immediately, the devil comes to steal the seeds lying on, the, on hard soil. See, you, hard, you harden your heart, you harden your, your, your soil, and the word of God is just going to bounce off of you. It's going to lay there on the surface. It's not going to get in. It's not going to do anything. So what good is it? But it, in, in the, devil, the devil comes after that seed right away. You get born again, the, here comes the devil. Well, everybody else is doing this, and I'm not going to get to do that. If I'm, You don't want to do what everybody's doing. Believe me, you don't. I don't intend to join the over 65% of the pastors that are hooked on pornography. Sorry. It's horrible. It's horrible today. 65% latest statistic. Pastor. Pornography every day. Man, that, that will flat pollute your whole life. And, and teenagers, too. It's like 85% of the teens, especially males still, but teens, are what, looking at pornography. What do you want to look at filth for? Huh? Save your eyes for your beautiful bride. Amen. Oh, don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. You look at me like a frog in a sandstorm. And, oh, you know, no, it's... <laughs> Come on. This is, this is real life. God wants you to have the best experience at life that you possibly can, and you'll never find that, you, you know, just, just, just jumping in the rack with everybody that you see. Come on. See, and, and that's a hard place where the, the seed doesn't get in because the world is screaming so loudly that we should be doing things other ways. No, God didn't change his mind about anything. He created us, and he knows what will fulfill us, how we'll be, how we'll be able to function the best. Amen? Amen. See, so, so the, 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 the soil is the heart in all four cases in, in this parable of Mark. Mark 4, 15, these are they by the wayside where the, world is, where the word is sown, but when they've heard it, Satan comes immediately, takes away the word that's sown in their hearts, and, and the believer must have the ability to not only hear the word, but retain it. This is where discipleship comes in. You've got to hang out with people that are hungry for the word, people who know God, who know Jesus, who are seeking for more. Because I'll guarantee you, you go back in the world, they're going to tell you, oh, man, you don't want to get all tangled. That stuff is all fairy tale. You don't want to mess with that. You know, who want, it, 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 they, just got, they just need a crutch. You know, well, what's your crutch? Booze? Grass? Meth? I mean, the world's got a lot of crushes. Come on, sex? Pornography? What's your crutch? You're going to have a crutch. Might as well enjoy it. Let your crutch be God. Let your crutch be Jesus, because he's really not a crutch. He's an enabler, a healer, an, em an empowerer. That's got nothing but good for you. All the rest of the stuff's trying to steal your life. It's from the devil. He steals, he kills, he destroys. He's trying to get the word out of you. But, and, and a believer, you can't just hear the word. You're sitting here today, that's great. But if you don't get it by revelation, you ain't going to get it. See, we can hear, and it never goes anywhere but here. It needs to come here and get in here and become a part of who we are. It's revelation. Wow, this, this word's for me. Jesus died for me. Jesus shed his blood for me. See? God loves me. And he's got, he's got great things planned for me. And I want 
everything God has for me. I want the husband God has for me or the, or the wife God has for me. I want the life God has for me. I want the vocation God has for me. I want him to show me what I was designed for, what he put in me, because we've all got unique gifts and talents and, and, and all kinds of things that, that God will enhance because he put them there, right. see? Right. And that's where we really find our fulfillment. That's where we really come alive. Hallelujah. But we've got to push. We get the seed. We need to push it down in the soil. There, there are some, you, there are some uh, cases where you go, you broadcast the soil, but then you come back through with a plow and you turn it under so the seed is in the ground, not on the ground. Or you just go along and you got little things, they, they just, they're pushing seed. <laughs> right? And that's what we've got to do is come and say, you know what, I'm going to put that in me. I'm going to get it down in me. What pastor say? I'm going to go back and I'm going to look. Is, he really, is that really true? Oh, that is true. Whoa. And put it down inside of you. Thy word have I hid in my heart, the depths of my being. Why? That I might not sin against thee. In other words, I might not be separated from you. I don't want to be separated from God. I want to be walking together with him. So the seed has to be pushed down. With the heart, the depths of our being, the man, a man believes, Romans 10.10. 10. Uh, faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Amen? Uh, Romans 10.17. The believer's got to be able to take the seed, push it down into the depths of his soul until he gets a revelation. Woo! This is for me. By his stripes, I am healed. It's for me today, now. Hmm? Yeah. There's no lack in his house. Hallelujah. He would that I prosper and be in good health, even as my soul prospers. My soul's going to prosper. I don't want my soul to be a hindrance. See? The believer must be able to take the seed, push it down the depths of his soul until he gets a revelation, and you, that usually only happens when you're willing to be discipled. And that means you've got to get together with at least one other person that you respect, that, that's walking clean, that understands the Word of God, and then listen to him. Follow him around. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. You know, don't follow me where it's me. Follow me as I follow Christ. It's even better in smaller groups where you, where you can, you know, like Pastor Lou, we, we have a home study there in his house on Tuesday night. To get together, you can ask questions and talk about the Word of God. It, even, even those work parties where you get together and you're talking about the things of God, the, the men's group, the, the, the Iron Man. Is, is one of those small groups where you can ask questions. Lives can be totally transformed because revelation comes. Hallelujah. We've experienced that. Revelation, just in a group of men being together. The ladies' meetings, same way. By them dialoguing and, and sharing the Word of God, revelation comes, and it gets down in you. And that's what you want to do is find an environment. Don't go hang out with the boys at the hookah lounge. I mean, I mean we got people doing that. I don't know what's the matter with them. They need a brain transplant. Oh, come to church once a week and then go spend three, four nights in some bizarre wooka 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 place. Man, cut you you won't even sing in church, you know, you won't dance in the aisles of church and you go out and go act crazy. Just cause what? I don't know. <laughs> come on. We gotta think about it, really. How do you act in the football game? Ooh, you know. Come on, or whatever. I don't know what Alabama, I don't know what Alabama people do. I have no idea. They say, Y'all run. I don't know. Roll tide. Roll tide. That's right. I knew that, but I yeah, I wanted you to say it. Anyway, yeah. See, but we get excited about things that we're really into. Hmm? Hallelujah. So let's get into Jesus. Let's get into winning the loss. Let's get into, first of all, receiving the word, and then let's get in to, to getting up close to somebody that can help us grow in God. Glory to God. All discipleship starts with a revelation knowledge of the word in your spirit, Romans 10. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge or a lack of revelation of the things of God. Knowledge. 
Church attenders who sporadic, sporadically or barely hear preaching but have no revelation of it will never, ever be disciples. Therefore, they're cut off from the promises of God. You say, well, life's pretty good. I don't need Jesus. Yeah, because God is merciful and kind. He lets the, the, the sun shine and the rain fall on the just and the unjust. He is a merciful, loving God. But there's a judgment day coming. I said there's a judgment day coming. And I don't care how long you live. It's coming, baby, like a freight train. Glory to God. Hmm. Small groups, individual discipleship, it's necessary. Don't ever shy away from it. Get yourself accountable to somebody because an interested seeker is, is wanting to receive not just knowledge but revelation. Revelation. Knowledge has to do with salvation, healing, blessing, family, the will of God, spiritual warfare. It's got to do with everything. And a new believer must learn verses that apply to every one of those areas. See, memorizing the scripture is good. Finding what the word you need and memorizing it. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That's what it's about. And it's the word that bears fruit. The second soil is obedience. In, Mar in, the four in the 16th through the 17th, it says, that Likewise are, are, are the, the seed that was sown on stony ground, who, when they've heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, have no root in themselves, so endure, but for a time afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they're offended. And the second level of discipleship is those who hear the word and receive it, but only endure for a little while. Obedience is necessary. It not, doesn't matter how you feel. I've had days when I feel like I'm defeated. I've had days when I feel like nobody loves me. I've had days when I feel like quitting. But I don't pay attention to how I feel. What is the word of God? There's days I don't feel like tithing. I don't feel like it, man. I don't know what I'm gonna, how I'm going to get by on what, what, what I'm doing. But I don't look at that. I look at the word of God, and I just say, okay. If that's the word of God, I'll obey. Because obedience is better than sacrifice. See? If the word is never acted upon, it's unfruitful. Amen. The, the word has to be, has to roll from knowledge to action. Faith is actually an action word. Faith without its corresponding action or works is dead. Oh, well, I believe in Jesus. Yeah, well, what are you doing to prove it? Are you tithing? If you're not, you're probably not saved. You need to get, get to the altar and get saved. Really, because you, you take on the character and nature of God that is giving. God's a giver. See? Well, if we're still wrestling with that, I mean, something's wrong somewhere. I understand having hesitation in the beginning, but to obey is the whole thing. A new believer must be taught to obey the Word of God. It's critical. And I'll tell you, the way our society's going, you've got to be pretty sold out or you're going to get, you're going to get plowed under. Pastor Asid's been in prison for two years. They sentenced him to eight years in prison over, I don't know, some Muslim country. He's still there in jail. Just because he's a Christian. Would you be able to stand up for that? See, this lady, she gives birth to her baby while chained to the floor. Why, why is she being chained to the floor? Why is she in prison? Why is she and her husband being persecuted? Because they're Christian. That's all. The only reason is they're Christian. Well, what, what, what if that was us? I wonder how many people be here today if, if that was the way it is today. See, somewhere we've got to get a revelation of who Jesus is so we can stand against the devices of the devil. And whether I live or whether I die, it's for Christ. It's for the love of God. Hallelujah. And so we've got to act on the word or it's, it's unfruitful. We've got to learn to obey. And once, a, once we receive a word, that'll, it'll change our character. It'll change our life. I mean, everything, everything changes. But we've got to implement what we've heard, obey and do. And yeah, you'll find that you'll attempt to obey, not be able to in the natural, but if you confess that inability is sin and ask God to help you, he empowers you and you can do what you could never do before. That's how addictions are broken. 
So how do you know? Because I've got a very addictive personality. But thank God, I, get, I don't have to live under addiction. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We've got to be doers and not hearers only, James 1.22. So, so be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own self. So you're in deception if you're not obeying the word of God. You think you're a Christian. You think everything is fine, and you're not obeying. You are deceiving yourself. Hmm? That too hard a word? No. So what are the examples? Well, if you're not tithing, you're deceiving yourself. If you're, if you're uh, uh, dating unbelievers, you're deceiving yourself. Somebody just choked on that one. No, that was, <laughs> okay. no, that was an amen. I know it was. No, wait, we should. Uh, see, I don't believe in dating. I believe in courting. There's a big difference. You don't go around and kick all the tires on every used car in town. You don't go try out every girl in town or every guy in town. See, you wait on the Lord until he shows you, and he can and he will, the one that's right for you, and then you court them. You don't date them because dating is about trying everything out and seeing if it works. I guarantee you, kids, things work. They work whether you want them to or not. They're going to work. You don't have to worry about that. Everything works fine. Well, how about, how, about, how about walking in unforgiveness? You've got to forgive. What? Well, you don't know what's done to me. You don't care less what's been done to you. You don't know what's been done to me. I still have to do what you've got to do is obey the Lord and forgive. Let it go. Let the righteous judge take care of it. Don't worry about it anymore. Praise the Lord. Oh, need you love your wife, love your husband, honor your parents. Hmm. Yeah. Because it's obedience that has great, great recompense of reward. It really does. Once a believer makes a decision to act on and, and do something in obedience to the world, here comes the devil making every effort that he possibly can to stop you with tribulations and persecution. See, we love the Christian life, but we don't want tribulation. We don't want persecution. Tribulum is a piece of equipment like a big steamroller that rolls over wheat to separate the stock from the grain. Very heavy, applies immense pressure. I mean, they had one out here uh, uh, a few years ago, and one of those big steamrollers, and it was, it was packing the asphalt down, and it, they got them so they vibrate now. And the whole, the whole ceiling of the roof outside fell in. They shook it right off the building. I mean, we're talking about tribulation. The house was tribulating. Had to have that repaired. So, and, and then pressure, see, that applies immense pressure. And pressure is Satan's method, his modus operandi, his method of opposition. Okay? Because persecution means to be hunted. To be hunted. So, and, and the devil likes to hunt, uh, hunt you continually, like uh, they hunted Saul of Tarsus, or Saul of Tarsus hunted the Christians. To just be at you all the time with something. Okay? So we've got, we've got to walk a discipler or a life coach or a mentor, or whatever you want to call them, needs to walk with new believers through certain tribulations and persecutions they'll face uh, as soon as they become serious about obeying the world. This is a part of discipleship. And that's why if you're, if you're a young Christian, and I mean Young in your growth, you may have been thought you've been a Christian forever, but if you're just not living in victory, you need to get somebody you can walk with that can begin to help you go through the tribulation, go through the persecution. It, it, it's a part of discipleship. The third soil is relationships. Relationships. The third area of discipleship Jesus spoke about is the deepening of our relationship to God. As the years go by, believers who have become disciples can become distracted disciples because the cares of the world come on in. I mean, we are, we're, we're too busy. We're too busy on Facebook. That's true. Really, I mean, fasting Facebook is a wonderful thing. You'd be surprised how many hours it'll loosen up. Really, and uh, 
uh, television is another one. Go videos is another one. Video games is another one. I mean, all these, all the, there, there's so many things. They're just in there trying to get your time. Get your time. And distract you. See, the, the three things that'll distract you, worries of the world. Right? Ha, ha, ha. Phew. How am I going to make enough money? How am I going to pay the bills? How, how am I? Phew. Wow. How am I going to get that new car? How am I going to? How am I going <laughs> to? All this stuff, right? Worried about it, right? We, we shouldn't be worrying anyway. We should be casting all our care upon Jesus, for he cares for us. Hmm? Uh, uh, little small things to do with houses and cars and computers and fashion and money and all this stuff. Praise the Lord. Focusing on little things that don't really matter. The deceitfulness of riches. The ease with which Satan can remove money from you when you've chased it. I personally know people who were millionaires and all of a sudden one day, boom, it's gone. Or wealthy people that just thought they had life made and all of a sudden they were in an accident or something, and heck, somebody else was enjoying it. The desire for other things creeping in. Hobbies and habits. I love hobbies. I love it. I love it. I like to be out on my motorcycle every day, or just going down the road. But you know what? That's a hobby and really can't be a lifestyle. There, there are, there, there, there's time to spend in the Bible. There's time to pray. There's time... To, to be about the Father's business. So you can't always be having fun. I used to have fishing poles. Loved to fish. All the eyes fell off the poles. I haven't used them in so long. They just fell off. I couldn't even sell them. You know, the little eyes, the line goes through. The, the line rioted a long time ago. I love to fish. I just haven't been in a while. Hallelujah. I had to give up hunting until we had too many rabbits in the backyard. Hobbies, habits, rings, things, and blings. They can all distract from God. And we've got to watch that, to guard against that. A true fruitful disciple never loses his focus on drawing closer, drawing closer, drawing closer. I'm not satisfied with the relationship I had yesterday. I want it better tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. I want to be like Enoch. If that's possible, I'm just, you know, I get to where I'm walking with God every day and we're just walking and talking. All of a sudden he says, you know, we're closer to my house than we are to yours. Why don't you come with us? <laughs> Read about it. I mean, he's just, he, he, he walked with God and he was not. Woo! <laughs> Glory! Huh? Mm. If anything has stopped, stepped into our focus and is pulling us away from God, we need to ruthlessly remove it as a weapon of the enemy to make us unfruitful. I mean, the other day I'm driving down the street and this big old motorcycle went by and I turned and I'm, look, I'm just looking at him. I, man, that's a nice looking bike. That's real. Whoa! That's as bad as texting. And I had to reset my mind to say, you pay attention to your driving. I don't care what's over there. Yeah, maybe, maybe you've done that too. You're just you're going along, and there's a billboard or something. You're looking at that. You're going, oh, you know, well, <laughs> everybody's supposed to do everything at the same pace, and they don't. <laughs> so you, you got, we've got to learn to just keep focus. Demas has forsaken me. What happened? The love of many will wax. Cold. Don't base your faith on your friend, not even your mate. This is between you and Jesus. The great crisis for, for, for young people is you get, up, you get up to a certain place, and it's usually like the college transition, somewhere in there. You've been riding on mama and papa's faith or, or somebody else's faith, and, all, and you start asking all these questions, and you get all confused, messed up. Why? Because God is saying, I want you to make a choice for me. 
You can't ride on somebody else. You've got to choose. And I say choose this day who you'll serve. Praise the Lord. And Jesus is so worth following. Praise God. Hallelujah. Fourth soil, fruitfulness. Fruitfulness. Jesus said some would bear 30, some 60, some 100. This has to do, I believe, with the measure of faith that God has given to each believer and, and to the maturity level will allow him to take us to. Will allow him to take us to. We can always grow. We can always be transformed. We can always have more. But we can choose. We can say, oh, that's enough. I don't want any, you know, I've, I've got my churchy box right here, my little Christian box. And I, I'm not coming out. That's a bad way to be. But it does. It has to do with the measure of faith God has given to each believer and how we use it. And yes, some are more gifted than others. Not everybody is the same. Uh, and there's three ways to bear fruit in the New Testament. Everybody can gather in the harvest. John 4, 36, already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life. But we're supposed to win souls and gather fruit. Everybody can do that. And we should be. That was amazing. Sister Camille was following up on a gal that was first-time visitor at the Revival Center. She called this morning, talked to her. Uh, there was an altar call at the Revival Center, but obviously she didn't really connect that she wasn't where she should be. And uh, she's talking to her on the phone, led the lady to the Lord. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Talk about a miracle. That's a miracle. When a, when a person accepts Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that's a miracle. It's the biggest one. It really is. Jesus said some would bear 30, some 60, some 100. Everybody can bear fruit, though, and it has to do, like I said, with that measure of faith. Everybody can gather in the harvest. Everybody, each one of us, that's our calling. We kind of understand that, well, we have baby thing. But we haven't figured out we're supposed to have spiritual children. And it's just as gratifying, just as satisfying. It's just as much work. And actually more important in one sense. Win souls, gather fruit. And, and there's, there's things like helps. Pastor Sharon comes up and says, I need help. You know that's a gift? It is. If you can clean a bathroom, if you can weed, if you can... Uh, tote and carry. If you can be a, if you're a good carpenter like Gilberto is, if you, you know, you have different skills. You bring your skills and your talents, and you offer them to the Lord. Hallelujah. Then you work and you help with urgent needs. Let our people learn to devote themselves to good works, so as to help cases of urgent needs and not be unfruitful. Titus 3:14. And that also includes having compassion for others. How can you help? somebody else get unstuck. You see your brother, your sister, they're stuck. Your kids, they're stuck. Your parents, they're stuck. How can you help them? Do you care enough to try to help them, to bring the Word of God to them, to tell them what, what the Word says? Because that's what works. I said, that's what works. Huh? Generosity. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that it may abound to your account. Philippians 4.17. What if we had a church full of people that were engaged in the harvest? Hmm? If we all got involved in the harvest. Woo! Huh? I'm telling you. Man. It'd, be, it'd be absolutely phenomenal. What did I do? I turned too many pages is what I did. <laughs> so what we need to do is, 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 number one, is become a disciple. And then also be a discipler. And we've said it before in a different way. Everybody in this church should be a pastor of one. You take the responsibility, number one, to tr have yourself discipled, accountable to somebody, trained by somebody, and getting into a group where you can grow in grace, and then also have take up somebody else and make them your project to encourage them, to strengthen them, to help them grow in grace. You can't stop a church like that. There's no, there's no boundaries on a church like that. There's no limit to what can happen in a church like that. 
I have people come to me and they say, oh, you know, we, we should be feeding the hungry. Well, good, go do it. Oh. 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 Well, I thought maybe somebody else would. Yeah, that's the problem. Right? You go feed the hungry when, when you have a group of people that have a burden to go feed the hungry, and then the church encourages them and helps in any way that they can. We should, do, we should do neighborhood evangelism and go clean up yards and, you know, find old people and help them and paint their houses and clean up the yards. That's cool, man. That's great. In fact, we had a group of young people that wanted to do that, and so we commissioned them and we, we told them how to do it, and they, they didn't do it. Don't expect me to do it. See? But as we find the gifts in people, then, hey, there's no limit to what can be done. We have, a school, we have a school. The school, the, the, the school district wants to give us a school. Okay. Well, what are we going to do with the school? Well, we can be disciplers to the kids. I had a kid in the garage sale out here yesterday. He get, yeah, yesterday he came with his his dad, and his dad was bragging on him because this this kid he was about twelve, and he would. There's kids in school don't have lunch money, don't have money for anything. Actually, don't have a home. And so he would take whatever he had and give it to them. Heart of compassion. Well, I wish he was going to this church. You know, I mean, that's really that, not that you don't. You understand? But we just need to look at what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? I, I can't do everything. I need you. We, we need desperately need you. We need you. You need us. It all works together, see? But together, we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. Hallelujah. And we're going to move ahead, and we're going to do what God has called us to do, and the spirit of Zeus is going to fall. We're going to have a good shouting time. But only if you'll shout. <laughs> but I guarantee you, if we get a little more running room, we'll get a few shouters and runners, and that'll encourage us all. Praise the Lord. Amen? Glory! Glory! Amen. Hallelujah.